we have here is a typical slave cabin, which remained exactly the way it was during 1830, 1840, all the way up to 1965 as a sharecroppers or a day laborer or tenant farmer cabin. Every one of these were built the exact same spec. And I think that came from the French where they say, okay, they gotta have at least 500 square feet. You didn't cook in them during slavery because the slaves got their food from one single place. The cooks at the big house would also cook for the slaves because you didn't allow them to have knives and booms and all that kind of stuff during slavery. But besides, they didn't have time to cook. They were in the field. You know, when you're working in the field, you would have your little tin strapped to your side and your little cup. And they would come through with the pail, little boys with this dipper in there, and they would dip you up, whatever it was. After slavery during sharecropping time, then people was allowed to into cook and acquire utensils and stuff like that. <laughs> Those were typical little handmade gates around the fence. Now, why they put uh, the fence around there? Because the rest of the place around there is usually cotton grown all the way up to the fence. I mean, here's your area. Everything's gonna be contained in your fence because we don't want you acquiring any more land, you see. If this slave cabin was on the riverbank side and the river was pretty close, you know, 100 feet, you can acquire more land. You know, gotten because that wasn't part of the deal, but nobody was using it and you decide to use it and therefore you would have what's called a truck patch where you would go down and you would plant because that sand and loam is very good for sweet potatoes, your Irish stock potatoes, and you just plant that and walk away. You didn't have to worry about weeding it or nothing, forget about it. And this to me looks like wash day. Usually wash day is on the Saturday morning because you work the fields from Monday, dusk to dawn, through Friday. The men goes to the field on Saturday and stay in the fields until about two. But the women stay home and do the women's work, meaning they do all the washing, they take all the little rugs out, and they keep the little boys home to do the rug beating and to go down the Cane River and lug the water back up. Because when you're doing your whites, you gotta boil the water and you gotta put your bleach stuff in there. And most of these soaps are homemade. They made everything on their own, right? you didn't buy anything. It was all handmade stuff. So that's a typical called women's work day at home. Now during the week, the women are in the field. The children are in the field. Now that looks like white shirts. No one had white shirts on the plantation. You may have one white shirt and that was to wear the church. That was it, buddy. A lot of these women who worked part-time in the big house, they would be running a little washing operation after they get off work, and which the little girls would help do. And so that looks like a wash a day for, you know, for extra money there. This here is a Saturday afternoon where everybody's home, they got a few clothes to wash, and that is personal clothes. See the tub sitting right there? And the kid is leaning against the uh, cistern. Most people thought it was a well. No, it's not a well. Wells didn't come till later, you know. Because if you don't have a cistern dug and made for you, you'd have to have kids marching down to the river to get the water and to keep that barrel full. And if you notice, almost in all these pictures, There'll be a chicken or something running around mm -hmm. because that was the mainstay of the plantation. But you know, the chickens are laying the eggs and the kids will have to go collect the eggs. And, but on Saturday, no one ate the eggs. The eggs will be sold to a guy that would come around from the city called the Egg Man. And he would come around on his wagon and mule every Saturday to buy up eggs. And you get like five cents for an egg. And that money would help to buy things for the family. And that would keep you out of the uh, plantation store because that credit was very high. And uh, of course the brown eggs were cheap. 
<laughs> so nobody really wanted brown eggs at the time because they hey, I'm gonna get less money. But usually the family would use the brown eggs for making cakes and stuff like that. You got little boys out there playing around. It looks like a, a little hole there, so it looks like they're crawfishing. Because see how they make the road? They have like a driveway and a curving, and on each side there's a little ditch. So we would go out in the spring and you would do crawfishing. And you notice the uh, supervisor, the adult, sitting on the steps there making sure they're not getting crazy, like going swimming in there. But those are typical activities. Before the cotton to be picked, we get to fish a lot. Uh, you get to work in the garden, but we would always do a lot of, of crawfishing. And those things are full of crawfish. They were full of, we got that old red clay down there and the crawfish would come up into those. You know, they would tie a chicken neck on the spring and they would put it out in one and the crawfish would clamp onto it. And then you put it in and you put it in your bucket. And so that's how we got crawfish then. Nobody bought crawfish like now they buy them by the side. Nobody bought fish, nobody bought crawfish. You go down to the Cane River and you get, you get your fish, you trap your turtles. Nobody bought any of this stuff. So now you gotta buy it. This is typical. You see that little girl there? She's about 13 years old. And normally all these kids here would be in the cotton field, picking cotton. But this is not cotton picking time. This is probably cotton chopping time because these kids are too little to chop cotton. When you're about nine years old, you get to go chop cotton. And so what the families would do was take all their kids to one house and these houses will act like nurseries and each one of the mothers will probably come Saturday give their little girl a quarter or 50 cent because not only that she's babysitting these children she's also cooking their dinner so she would just put one black skillet in the oven at a time to cook the cornbread so when you came at lunch to pick up your children, you would pick up your cast iron cornbread, and then you would pick up your little pot, and you would go home with your cabbages, mustard greens, collard greens, beans, whatever that she was cooking. You know, you would have your lunch at your family house, and then you would come back in the afternoon, and you would bring her your things back, with whatever you want her to take care of while she's there. She ran everything. So she had a restaurant going, she had a nursery going, and if any of these kids uh, required a spanking, she would do the recommendation. When all the parents come home to pick up their kids, uh, she would give a report. And basically the mothers would say, okay, 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 okay. And there were no questions about her authority to recommend spankings. And here she's nine years old, and she recommend who gets a spanking. Now those clothes are handmade from flour sacks. We would buy the flour by the 25 pound bag from the plantation store. And that was a vendors who basically service just rural plantation stores. They would come up from Homer and Appaloosa, and they would come around and they would service the plantation store. You can get this in town. Uh, my sisters went to school with flower sack dresses. At the time, everybody sold. You learn how to sew. In school, when you was lucky enough to get to school, every child in the little segregated black schools had to take home economics. Well, you learn to sew, you learn to iron, because that part of your education was to work for the big house. Or come to town in Nagadish and work in somebody's home. And the boys, they would have shop to teach you how to do, you know, tack well then, teach you how to do light carpentry, because you're gonna work on the plantation. That was the life on the plantation. And that was the kind of education that black kids were given what it could be useful for the plantation period.